Hey guys, this is Swagger. He is ready to be hand stripped, so let's get busy. I have a wide variety of stripping tools in my toolbox. Here I am displaying the tools that I used on Swagger, but as a professional groomer, I get a wide variety of coats to work on. See the accompanying blog for my entire stripping tools list and links. Each area of the dog has coat at different stages of growth. Certain areas are softer, like the sides of the neck and the pants. So finding your favorite tools for each area of your dog may take a little bit of experimentation. During this video, you will see me pick up different tools for this dog, or sometimes just use my fingers. It's important to understand that hand stripping is removing coat that will shed out naturally. If you've ever stroked a shedding dog, you know the coat comes out readily. Hand stripping facilitates the shedding process, making room for new healthy coat to grow back in. The wire coat is not like our hair or dogs with hair that continually grows. Wire coats have a predetermined length and when it reaches the exogen phase, it sheds and regrows. Hair has an undetermined length and a much longer growth cycle, so hair will not be easily removed. If you clip the wire coat, it changes the coat completely. The entire growth pattern is changed. Neutering and spaying can cause hormonal changes that also affect the way the coat grows and its shedding cycle. There's a lot of information to learn about grooming the different coat types. I will link information in the blog on my website at groomingsafer.com which will give you tips to learn more about the different coat types and how to groom each one properly. Maintaining the coat is the pet owner's responsibility. It's important to keep the coat brushed and combed once a week. The chalk is applied using a chalk brush after applying a small amount of cholesterol chalk helper. This helps to give you a better grip on the hair. I like to lay a towel out on the table before applying chalk. This helps to keep the table clean. The knives work best when used at a 60 to 90 degree angle. When used correctly, you will see an equal amount of hair above and below your thumb on the tool as seen here. The carding knife, however, works best when held at a 45 degree angle. The carding knife is used to remove the woolly undercoat. Lightly drag the carding knife through the coat like a comb. To know how much pressure you need, you can check on your own arm. You don't want this to be uncomfortable for the dog and you should avoid irritating the skin. As you can see, I use one finger of pressure on the knife. The coarse stone when dragged over the hard coat removes the coarse, loose guard hairs. When used on areas where there is a soft downy undercoat growing back in, it removes this woolly fur. It's important to remove this woolly fur about two weeks after stripping by defuzzing the dog. Because this soft undercoat will fill in before the new guard hair pushes through. If there is too much undercoat present, it will inhibit the good rich colored coat from breaking through properly. The less coarse stone is very helpful for pulling coat without the risk of cutting the coat. This is extremely effective when the coat is blown in the exogen phase. The wood handle stone, or stone on a stick as some call it, is really helpful for removing coat after the bulk has been removed. I use this just as I would my finger and thumb. The finger cots and grippy fingers simply help to grab the hairs as you pull. The metal stripping stones, rock stones, and the diamond stone are all helpful for different areas of the coat. While you can get by without them, I find they make the job easier. While performing any stripping or carding on the coat, always remember to keep the skin held taut with your free hand, otherwise the process will be uncomfortable for the dog. Stripping knives come in fine, medium, and coarse. The fine is useful for the shorter, finer coat on the areas of the dog that are kept the shortest. The medium comes in handy for certain coat types and when rolling a coat. 
The coarse is used for the thicker coarse guard hair on the jacket. The weightlifting gloves help to make your hands more comfortable during long hand stripping sessions. In maintaining the Parson Russell Terrier, the dog should be double brushed, double combed weekly. Brush the dog completely, removing any loose hair, comb, then brush again, following up with a carding knife and or a pumice stone. To keep your dog beautiful year round, you could pick off any hair sticking out of place whenever you see it. The areas on the sides of the neck the front of the chest and the back end all have coat growing in multiple directions. It's important to only pull in the direction that the coat grows, all the while keeping the skin taut. Sometimes you have to get a little creative with how to reach these areas. Training the dog to lay on his side can be helpful. If you have him lie down for some of the regular brushing, he will be used to the concept when more serious work needs to be done. I allow the dogs some free time on the table. I have them do their favorite tricks and get treats. I like to make the grooming table a happy place to be. Here you see me pulling the hair in the different directions that it grows. Just gently pulling a few hairs at a time. I have him lying on his side. It makes it more comfortable to reach these areas and stretch the skin taut. I know when I was learning to hand strip, I had a lot of different questions. It's like, should you use thinning shears here? Are you allowed to trim there? Do you do the whole thing by hand? You know, how do you reach these areas? So I thought it was really, really important, you know, to show you the whole process. So here we're looking again at the different directions that the, this hair grows and how we're going to approach this. And here I have changed to a diamond stone instead of the stripping knife. I really don't have a plan on which tools I'm going to use where for the most part. I simply pick up the tool that I think is going to work the best. As I move along, sometimes hair will feel silkier or not be as loose, and so I changed the tools. On the back end of the dog, as you can see, the hair swirls and curls around as well. So we're talking about how we're going to get to these areas and the directions that we have to pull. So you can see I'm using his tail to keep his skin taut while I pull in the different directions. Here I am using the uh, pumice stone, the softer pumice stone to pull out a bulk of the hair. As you can see, it works really, really good. The hair is just falling off of him. This is actually my favorite stone to use. This particular stone actually is um, from a toilet bowl cleaner, a pumice stone toilet bowl cleaner, and it is my absolute favorite stone. Speaking of that, I need to stock up on some more of them because these work so good. So we're here, we're showing in a bit slow motion, the finger action of pulling on the stone. I simply press my thumb against the stone and pull. The DK stone does work just as well. So here I am laying him over on his side. You could see the action that I had with him up against my body as I rolled him over. I find dogs behave really well when I lay them on their sides when I use that body action of pressing them up against me and then kind of laying over them as I'm laying them down. Having him on his side really helps to pull out this hair on the side coat and round it down under the rib cage. 
It's a bit of a difficult area to reach comfortably for the dog. And I find with them laying down that I can stretch the skin taut and work on these areas comfortably. Comfortably for him. And his mom is comforting him because this is a very vulnerable position for a terrier to be in with their belly exposed. Just going over his whole body, getting him nice and trim, getting all that dead loose hair out, making room for the new hair to grow in. Now we're giving him lots of praise. He's a good boy. <laughs> He's such a good dog. Getting him some treats. Here we go. Happy boy. Will work for food, right? So here I'm working with my finger and thumb. I'm just pulling out any small hairs that are sticking up now that we've got the bulk of the hair off of him. Anything that's poking up, I'm grabbing. Going over him with the coarser pumice stone. You can see as I drag it over his coat, it's lifting up and out any loose hair. It's also grabbing some of that downy undercoat along with the coarse coat and just getting it right out of there. It's amazing how much coat this brings out. Tightening up his shoulders a little bit, getting it a little tighter. This is the stone on a stick. It's great for getting these shoulders. You notice I tend to relax him a little bit when I'm going in to do something that he may not appreciate, like his chest. The stone on a stick kind of works like my finger and thumb. You hold, see me holding the skin taut as I go. Lifting the hair up and out a little bit so I can see what needs to come out. And you notice me switching back and forth between my tools. This is a rock stone from Ashley Craig Greyhound Stripping Tools. It's helping me to get those shorter, tighter hairs out. And now I've switched to another Greyhound tool. It's a metal stone. As I go down tighter and tighter on the shoulders, I'm using uh, finer tools that help me to grab that shorter hair. And you'll notice that the shorter hair tends to be a little bit silkier. It's a uh, little harder to grab onto. So you really need the finer tools to get in there and get that. And this groom actually spread out over a two-week span. We had him come in one Sunday 
and he had several breaks during that groom because his brother and sister came with him. So we would give him a break because he got the bulk of the work and we would let him go out and go potty and then rest and play with some toys, which he just loves squeaking and squeaking the toys. And while I worked on his brother and sister and then I put him back up on the table so while this looks like a lot of work all at once, he had plenty of breaks, a chance to get some water, and then he had a two-week break between pulling out the bulk of the super loose coat and then coming back in and getting it tighter, getting some of that downy fuzz out of the way so that the coarse coat that was coming in could grow in. And we've got this hair on the chest nice and short now, so we're using the metal stone, I believe, here to get in there and grab those little short hairs. You notice I lift the head up and back when I am doing the throat. The purpose of this is to pull that skin tight as I go when I'm coming straight down the middle. We're still working on those curly Q areas here, coming down the shoulders, turning the head and grabbing a fold of skin helps to keep that skin nice and tight. These are tender areas, so you really want to be sure you're not pulling on the dog. Everything on this dog is done by hand. Whenever I'm working in areas where I'm on the bulk of the neck, you'll notice I'll grab a whole fold of skin when I'm doing that. That is because the skin is the loosest there and it really takes grabbing up a whole whole handful of skin and holding it tight. If you have a dog that's going to be hand stripped, it's important to teach them these holds. Especially terriers can take offense to the hold more than the stripping. If you teach the dog to be held in the way that a groomer needs to hold them by grabbing up a fold of skin, I find that it helps the dog a lot if they're trained to handle this. And a good way to train them is to, when they're not being worked on, grab a fold of skin and have their favorite treat in your hand and slide that favorite treat in their mouth and let them chew it up as either you're holding the skin or immediately when you let go. And this will teach the dog to associate the hold along with something that they really enjoy. It's also important whenever you do this to keep these sessions very short, maybe three times holding onto the dog's fold of skin, treating them, letting them go. And when you let them go, make a big, big deal out of it. Tell them they're the best dog in the whole world for what they just did. All right, we are moving on to the legs. He's such a good boy. I love this dog. He loves to give fives. So I'm laying him on his side again. And as you can see, we're back to where he was at the beginning with all the loose coat. Each section that I start will be taking him back to square one. And you can see how I do each section of the dog from beginning to end. So. We did the body from beginning to end. Now we're doing the legs from beginning to end. Laying him on his side helps to keep him from pulling on his front legs. It's very helpful. You ever notice when you go to work on your dog's front legs, they start pulling their leg backwards like, no, 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 you're not doing this. And keeping him on his side really helps to keep him still and accepting of this. And again, I'm using the finer stone 
and not the coarse stone for this work, as well as my finger and thumb. Going down his side, mom's helping me keep the skin taut and comforting the dog. So I was explaining to mom there that we're keeping the shoulder angles nice and tight. On dogs like this, I do not scissor around the feet. I remove the hair that needs to come out as much as possible just by finger and thumb. If it were right before a dog show and I had done all the work by stripping, then I would go back in and maybe tighten up the edges with my thinning shears but the bulk of the work is always done by stripping so here i'm using the finer stripping stone ground down i took it out on the sidewalk and i ground it into a bit of a point and wrapped it in vet wrap to make it easier to hold <laughs> good boy This fine stone works really good for this type of plucking. So the Parson Russell Terrier does not keep leg furnishings or any type of skirt. They're taken down nice and tight, somewhat even all over, with a slight little beard, shorter eyebrows, and a little bit of a fan in front of the eyes is customary for these dogs. They do not have hair that grows on the front of the knees. It's good to take that down tight. Take him in nice and tight on the back of his legs to show his angulation. And if he were my own dog, instead of just pulling him down like this, I would just fine tune him as the hair grows so that I can get it exactly how I want it. using the stone on a stick here. I have links to all these tools in my blog that accompanies this video. <laughs> kiss, kiss, kiss. Every time I work on his front legs, he thinks he should give me a five. If the coat is rolled, as opposed to being pulled down out like it is here, you can build out multiple layers so that the coat looks a little fuller and yet still real tight. That's the benefit of rolling the coat. One of my next videos coming out will be of a Brussels Griffon where we are building out a rolled coat on him. Hopefully we will also have a standard wire hair dachshund coming in that we will be building a rolled coat on. And when you're building a rolled coat, what I mean by that is we're starting them from a blown coat and then taking it on up into a rolled coat. So that's um, quite interesting to do. So as we move on, we're just continuing to pick over the coat. Getting these small fluffy hairs off the legs. Yes, I love you too, Swagger. He's such a good dog. I 
I love using the mirror because I can see in the mirror what I cannot see when I'm up close on a dog. And I can look at the perspective in the mirror and see any light fluffy hair sticking up. Good boy. So as you can see, the hand stripping process is a very time consuming process. Just a few hairs at a time and just pick, pick, pick over the dog once you get the bulk of the coat off. But it's important to be thorough and to keep this pick, pick, picking process going until you get it nice and tight. You don't want to do a job halfway. You don't want it to be messy. You want it nice and tight and thorough. And this is important for the, you know, the coat growth coming back in. If you're not thorough, you're going to have hair at different stages, which would be great if you were rolling the coat. But if you're doing a complete pull down like we're doing here, you want it to be even all over. And you can tighten up the shoulders and the hips and the cheeks and the top of the head as you get closer to the show date. But six or eight weeks ahead of a show, at least eight weeks ahead of a show, which is what we're doing here, you want to get the bulk of that hair off if you're pulling it down from a blown state, which his coat was blown when we started. So we have to get it off evenly over the entire dog and allow it to grow back in and then you can mold it and fine tune it as it's growing back in. So we're starting on the head here. As you can see the head, the head coat is completely blown. I'm pulling it out with my finger and thumb, getting the long completely blown coat off first. I'm using my thumb on the muzzle to help keep the skin taut as I go. Now I'm using the Chris Christensen stone on a stick. Pulling his eyebrows and his beard. Just pulling out the dead loose coat. Trying to keep the skin tight with my finger and thumb on his muzzle. Because this dog is not supposed to have an excessive beard, you do need to get a lot of this length out of his beard. Attempting to keep a rectangular shaped face. Always pulling in the direction that the coat grows. Want nice flat cheeks. Short blended eyebrows. Here I'm using a metal stripping stone, just getting the fine close hairs. Pulling a little up and then pulling it back. 
by pulling it up it shows where I need to pull Picking it up and then pulling it out, picking it up, pulling it out. Combing the beard to see where it's at. And it's very important to keep combing in between the work. It's really starting to take shape now. I want to get his cheeks nice and flat. Pick the hair up, pluck it off. I'm able to get a little tighter around his eyes at this point because he has eight weeks to grow the fan around his eyes back and natural out a little bit. So by getting it tight now, it'll look perfect by show day. And the throat has to go nice and tight as well. Yeah, it's a good boy. Isn't he the best? Such a good dog. Here you can see an overhead view of the top of the head, just picking it up, pulling it back. This picking up action helps me to get a nice even hand strip on the top of the head or anywhere that I'm working. by getting the coat out when it's in that phase it gives the follicle room for the new thicker guard hairs to come through here i'm using the stone on the top of the head you notice i have a little bit different of an action when i'm going that close on the head i put my thumb on the stone just use the corner and pull it through Getting between the eyes some more. Just very tedious work. As a professional pet groomer, you may be tempted to go in with your thinning shears or in with the clipper, thinking it'd go a whole lot faster and, you know, what difference would it really make? Trust me, it makes a difference. Don't be tempted to pick up your clippers or your thinning shears to do this work. So if you are clipping the hair off and not carting the undercoat out of the way, what happens is, is the thick undercoat stays trapped in the follicle and the cut off harder hair stays stuck in the follicle 
all this leads to coat and skin problems. It's really important to remove it out of the follicle and make way for the new coat. If you don't want to hand strip your dog like this and you want to keep the coat and skin healthy, do not clip it. It's better to leave the dog shaggy and brush and comb the coat thoroughly once a week and use your carding tool and your pumice stone and whenever the hair or coat hits the exogen phase, just simply remove it then. If you don't want a tight hand strip on your dog, that's fine. Just don't clip it. You'll do more damage to your dog's coat and skin by clipping it than you would leaving it in its natural state. When we move on to the ears, you'll see him start back off shaggy again and then work towards getting the ears down tight. So we're almost finished with the head. He is looking very, very good. You can really see that rectangular brick shape coming through now really helped getting that beard nice and short it brought out the brick shape in the head just a few tidy ups here and there and his head is good to go It's time for the ears. So we're going to start him off in the most shaggy state. Back to square one again. Got him laying on his side. We're going to start hand plucking the ears. No clippers or scissors were used on his ears at all. Not even to edge them out. He's such a good boy about this. You can see I take the ear and roll it over my finger when I'm doing the outside. Always supporting the ear with my fingers, keeping the ear firm. That helps to keep him comfortable. I'm plucking the hair on the underside of the ear as well making sure to go in the direction that the hair actually grows. Yeah, it's a good boy. So sweet. So here I'm using my finer stone that is ground down into more of a point shape. This really does a good job grabbing the hair. Keeping the ear secured between my fingers. This is why I do not like to keep my dogs on a neck loop when I'm doing this sort of work. I like to let them lay down. They're more comfortable. And here you can see the ear rolled over my finger. This keeps the ear nice and firm to get this area closer to the base of the ear where the ear meets the head. Using my fingers as a firmness under that ear really, really helps. You can see how my, e my fingers are flat under the ear as well, giving it some brace. So we're making progress. 
His ears are really starting to take shape. You can see all those cute little spots now. You notice when he had a full coat on his ears, he looked all white, and now you can see the black shining through. This is the correct grooming method for any wire-haired dog, and especially the broken-haired dogs. And there's different types of wire-haired dogs. You have the broken-haired terriers. You have the terriers that are more like the Karen Terriers and the Westies. Uh, there's different coat types within dogs in general the wire haired terriers are not just you know they're not the only wire haired dogs as a matter of fact I groom several poodle chihuahua mixes that I hand strip that are wire haired um, there's many of the Jack Russell and Parson Russell mixes out there even some Yorkie mixes are wire-haired. Many times when you cross a long-haired dog with a short-haired dog, you come out with a wire-haired dog. And the grooming method is not just breed standard, and it's not just for show. The grooming method is the correct method of grooming a wire-haired type dog whether it's a mixed breed, a purebred, a show dog, it's the right method to groom the dog because of the coat type. And that's one of the things that I love about grooming by coat type. It doesn't matter the breed. It doesn't matter if it's a mixed breed. Grooming by coat type means, as a professional groomer especially, I put a dog on the table in front of me and I look at it and I assess what this dog needs to keep its coat and skin in the best possible condition. With any wire-haired dog, the technique that's needed is hand stripping. So now we're moving on to the tail. We're going to start with the tail in its original state with a blown coat. Here you can see it's all fluffy and shaggy. I'm going to start with the uh, smoother stone as opposed to the coarse stone. And I'm going to pluck out as much of the hair as I can that's really loose in the exogen face and get that out using this stone. The tail is not the dog's favorite part to be worked on, so it's always great to have somebody helping. I'm trying to work as quickly as I can to get in and out with this tail before he gets worried about it. So now I'm switching to a stripping knife and this is a coarse stripping knife because I'm working on the coarser hair. doing a little carding on the back end, carding the tail. You want to be very careful when you card the tail. You notice I didn't stay in there very long. A little bit of hand plucking. The reason why you want to be careful when you're carding the tail is because you don't want to scrape the skin. The bones are close to the surface of the skin. And anywhere where there's bones close to the surface, you don't want to card too much like the lower legs, the top of the skull. I'm using a lighter touch and going very carefully. Now here he's on his own without his mom. I'm asking him to stay and he's making the choice to stay, which is a big deal for him. So we're going to lavish him with praise. 
That's a good boy. He's making a good choice. Yes. Good boy. Yay, Swagger. Good boy. Whenever they make the right decision like that, be sure to acknowledge it. Don't just say, oh, good, he's being good. No, acknowledge that good decision. Good boy. He's getting a treat. He's happy. You notice how I put my hand on their shoulder when I'm asking them to stay and keep their head facing the other way. It's a very assertive action. His tail's almost done. Getting the underside tight with my metal stone. And when I show you the tools that I am using and I give you the names, I want you to know that I get no kickbacks. I get no free tools. I get no payment. I tell you about the tools that I use because I like the tools that I use. Just keep going back over it, tightening it up, getting rid of anything that's sticking out. You notice I keep switching tools because sometimes I feel like the tool I'm using isn't grabbing the hairs that I am going for. Lightly carding again. It's getting nice and tight now. When I'm almost finished with the dog, I go over the whole dog with the carding knife. Good boy. That's it. Good dog. Good dog. All right, we're moving on to the pumice stone. Now I've gone to the coarse pumice stone. And I'm going to go over the whole dog. This is the end of the groom. Where we're just going to go over everywhere with this pumice stone. Make sure everything loose is out and that the coat is nice and tight. This dog has a very pretty neck, does he not? Nice top line. Look at that nice sloping neck and shoulders. He's a beautiful dog. The only area of the body that I use clippers on this type of coat is on the belly and on the pads of the feet. There is a lot of information to learn about the different coat types. I will link information in a blog on my website, groomingsafer.com, if you want to learn more about the different coat types and how to groom each one properly. Thank you for watching guys. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. We'll see you next time guys. Bye. Bye.